a router connects different networks. It works as an intermediate device. It has multiple interfaces. When it receives a data packet on an interface, it reads the packet's destination address, makes the forwarding decision, selects the forwarding interface based on the forwarding decision, and forwards the packet from the selected interface. This process is known as routing. The information it uses to make the forwarding decision is called the routing information. It saves routing information in the routing table. Routing information includes paths and related information of connected devices on all interfaces. A path is called a route. A router can have a single, multiple, or no route to a destination. If it has only one route to a destination, it uses that to forward incoming packets intended for that destination. If it has multiple routes, it selects the best route. If there is no route, it discards the packets. There are three ways to add routing information to the routing table, automatic, static, and dynamic. In the automatic method, a router automatically adds the routing information. It uses the IP configuration of the active interfaces to build the routing information. When we change an interface's IP configuration, the router automatically updates the related information in the routing table. It adds two routes from each interface's IP configuration. These are a directly connected network route and a local host route. It uses the letter C for the directly connected network route and L for the local host route. LAN networks use the router's interface as the default gateway. Because of this, the router automatically assumes that the IP you configure on an interface will work as the default gateway IP for the LAN network connected to the interface. For example, in this network, we assign the IP address 30.0.0.1-8 to the gigabit Ethernet 0-0-0. It belongs to the network 30.0.0.0-8. Therefore, the router assumes the gigabit Ethernet 0-0-0 interface is connected to the LAN network 30.0.0.0-8 and adds a directly connected route for it in the routing table. A router accepts remote connections for various reasons. A remote connection requires a host IP address. A router uses its interface's IP addresses to accept incoming remote connections. For this, it adds interface's IP addresses to the routing table. It uses a subnet mask of slash 32 to represent a local host route in the routing table. Since it uses IP configurations of local interfaces, it cannot add routes that are available on other routers. You can use it on a network that has only one router. A network with multiple routers requires a static or dynamic routing method. Let us start with the static method. In this method, we manually manage the routing information. We add routing information to the routing table. If any change occurs in the network, we have to update the related information in the routing table. It works on top of the automatic routing method. That means we need to add routes only for the subnets available on other routers. We do not need to add routes for directly connected subnets. Routers automatically add routes for directly connected subnets from interfaces IP configurations. For example, this router adds routes for subnets 10, 20, and 30. This router adds routes for subnets 10 and 40. This default routing enables communication only between subnets connected to a single router. For example, in this network, subnet 30 can communicate with subnet 20 but not with subnet 40. Let us verify this. Open the command prompt of a PC of subnet 30. Check and verify it has a valid IP configuration. Send ping requests to its default gateway. Reply messages confirm its connectivity with the default gateway. Now, let us check connectivity with the default gateway of subnet 20. As we can see here, it has connectivity. Finally, let us check connectivity with a PC of the subnet 20. A reply confirms subnets 30 and 20 can communicate. It also verifies subnets connected through a single router do not need static or dynamic routes in the routing table. Now, let us check connectivity with the IP configured on another router's interface. As we can see here, we did not get a reply this time. The ping command sends ICMP echo messages. An ICMP echo message contains the source and destination addresses. The destination device uses the source address to reply. The source address of an ICMP echo message sent by this PC is 30.0.0.2. This router does not know how to reach this address. So, it discards this message, and the PC gets no reply. There is one interesting thing. If we send ICMP echo messages from this router, the source address will be 10.0.0.1. This router knows how to reach it. So, it will reply. To verify this, let us send ping requests from this router. As we can see here, 
it got the reply messages. If we want to enable communication between subnets connected to different routers, we have to add their routes to the routing table. The IP route command in the global configuration mode adds or updates a static route. It needs three parameters, the destination network, subnet mask, and next hop IP address. The destination network and subnet mask define the subnet available on another router. The next hop IP address is the IP address configured on another router's interface connected to this router. Let us add a static route on router 0 for subnet 40. Run the IP route command in global configuration mode. Specify the network address and subnet mask of the subnet 40. Use the IP address configured on router 1's interface connected to this router. It adds a static route for the subnet 40 to the routing table. To verify it, we can view the routing table entries again. The routing table uses the letter S to represent static routes. It is the static route we have just added. Now, let us add static routes on router 1. On it, we have to add two routes, one for subnet 20 and another for subnet 30. These routes will enable this router to forward incoming data packets for these networks. After adding static routes, use the show IP route command again to verify them. These are the static routes we have just added. Now, both routers know the routes to reach the subnets available to each other. It enables communication between all subnets. To verify this, let us send the ping request again. First, send ping requests to the other router's interface. As we can see here, now this PC can access this interface. Next, check connectivity with the default gateway of subnet 40. Finally, send ping requests to a PC available in subnet 40. Reply messages confirm that this PC can communicate with the subnet 40. It also verifies the static routing and routes we added to the routing table. Adding and managing routes statically is good if the network size is small or the network has a few routers. If the network has multiple routers, it becomes complex. In that case, dynamic routing is the best. In it, we configure a routing protocol that discovers, adds, and manages routes in the routing table. If any change occurs in the network, it automatically updates the related information in the routing table. There are many routing protocols. We will learn about these in upcoming videos. In this video, we will use the RIP routing protocol. It is the most straightforward routing protocol. Before configuring it, we must remove the static routes we added earlier. If we do not remove them, the router does not add the route discovered by the routing protocol. Routers give priority to the static routes over the dynamic routes. Routers keep only one route for every destination in the routing table. If a static route is available, they do not add the dynamic route. After removing static routes, rerun the IP route command to verify the routing table does not contain them. As we can see here, both routers have removed the static routes we added. Now, let us configure the RIP routing protocol. The router command in global configuration mode enables the routing protocol. The routing protocol requires a list of locally configured IP subnets. The network command adds the given subnet to this list. Specify the network address of the locally configured or directly connected subnet. We need to repeat these steps on all routers. Once enabled on all routers, it automatically discovers all network routes, selects the best route for every destination using an algorithm, and adds it to the routing table. The routing table assigns a unique letter to each routing protocol. The top section in the output of the show IP route command shows these letters and their associated routing protocols. It assigns the letter R to the RIP routing protocol. These are the routes discovered and added by it. Now, let us test the connectivity between local subnets available on different routers. This time, routers use the dynamic routes to forward packets. As we can see here, subnet 30 can access subnet 40. It verifies the dynamic routes added by the routing protocol. Finally, I have summarized all essential points again. You can take a screenshot of it for personal use. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback about this video, please share it in the comment section.